Hey everyone, in today's tutorial we'll be exploring some basic programming constructs that will open the doorway to C Sharp for many beginners out there. We'll discuss essential C Sharp concepts such as output and variables. Let's get started. We'll begin by creating a new project and using the Windows Forms application template. Go ahead and name it whatever you want. I'll go with Tutorial 1. Now keep in mind this will be the starting point for most of my tutorials to come. So, just know that. Alright, so we're given a blank form and a bunch of uh, graphic elements in our toolbox over here. If your toolbox is not showing, you can go to View, Other Windows, and then Toolbox. Now, all of these graphic elements are generated by the IDE to save us a lot of programming time. And we're going to go ahead and throw a couple of buttons in here. And resize them how you want them. Uh, it really doesn't matter to me. It's, it's, uh, it's your program, so do what you want. Just going to make it look a little more nice. Uh, you can change the text property of this uh, form window to, for instance, my program. You can also change the text properties on this, these buttons. For instance, uh, I'll, I'll name this one output and I'll name this one uh, variable output because that's what we will be doing with them. Right. So go ahead and double click on the output button. Um, in order to take us into the uh, to the form one code sheet, and um, basically what it has done is generated a new line of code that basically says whenever button one is clicked, and button one by the way is the name identifier for the output button. Um, whenever it is clicked, um, everything within these brackets will be executed. All of the code within these brackets will be executed. So we're going to go ahead and put s put in some basic code. Um, first of all, a lot of programmers like to know how to comment in uh, in the programming language they're learning. So right off the bat, I'm going to let you know that commenting in C Sharp is done through uh, f two forward slashes like this. Oh, whoops. For those of you who do not know what a comment is, it is essentially uh, a note to the programmer letting them know essential things about their program. Uh, basically, they'll leave these little, I guess you could call them sticky notes uh, or post-it notes, um, just above c uh, code that they are uh, typing. And it's like a reference basically telling you what something does or um, some notes about how you did something or uh, something you should come back to later. Just a, a note to the future programmer who's working on a uh, program. So right below this comment, I'm going to do some output. So. Uh, the main way we're going to do output in the tutorials I make is through message boxes. There's obviously several other ways to do output, uh, labels, um, really anything. But uh, message boxes is, is essentially what we'll be doing in the beginning. So the way you do a message box is pretty straightforward, just a message box. And this invokes the message box class. And then we'll be using the uh, show method within the message box class, which is dot show and then of course we're going to end every uh, programming line with a semicolon which is not new to programmers by any means and uh, obviously we have an error here because I'm not passing any parameter through uh, to the show method now for this particular method we will need a a string and this string will basically be the string that is outputted through this message box. This message box will appear in a pop-up box format and it will output a string that we give it. So for this string we'll just do something. We'll stick with something pretty uh, simple. We'll do uh, my name is Chris. And keep in mind that if you uh, were to not do a string, for instance a 9 or some other number, you will get an error. So we'll keep it at my name is Chris. So, to test out a program, we'll just uh, hit the Start Debugging button and uh, test out how it's working. When we click Output, we do get a pop-up box saying, My name is Chris, so it, it is working properly. Um, just to show you another way you can type message box, with, but uh, simpler, you may have noticed when you start typing in C Sharp, it starts suggesting things to you in this autofill uh, feature. If we type in MB, Oh, whoops, MB. It'll notice um, we're, tr we're trying to make a message box. 
and we can do tab tab and it will fill it out for us message box dot show test and we can replace test with whatever we want obviously so that is basic output uh, let's move on to making some variables and outputting those as well so let's go into the uh, form one design area and let's double click on variable output to go ahead and create another line of code in our form one cs file and basically once again this one is an on click event and we'll just uh, fill it up with some more code to execute once this second button is uh, clicked on right so let's create some variables um, there are multiple 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 types of variables that can be used in c-sharp um, a very large amount and there's several different types of decimals for instance uh, doubles floats uh, they all have differences very minor differences mostly dealing with uh, size the size of the decimal and then we've got our integers which is a whole number and our strings and our characters which are uh, dealing with uh, alphanumeric right so for our first variable let's go ahead and create a string as noted before strings are encapsulated in uh, quotations um, whenever you create a variable you need to give it a type give it a name and then a value a value is a is optional um, it will assign a default value if you do not give it a value but we're gonna in this case give it a value first of all let's give it a name for instance this one we'll just say it's called name and we'll give it a value of Chris like in our first example as you may notice that name is underlined in green that basically means that you have not used the variable yet this is a warning uh, green underlines means warning red is error so when it's green you can choose to ignore it but it is usually a good coding practice to at least take a look at your warnings and see if you can minimize them because they do show that you will have problems down along the line uh, red is fatal red means your program cannot be executed so then um, let's create an integer and we'll set it to age and we'll give it a value of uh, 20 right so as you can see numbers do not need to be encapsulated in um, quotations single or double and uh, we can also create a decimal or in this case we'll use double double is the more common uh, form of decimal there are differences between uh, declaring decimal double or float uh, mainly the difference lies with size as in how many uh, how many uh, spaces can we have how many decimal places can we have um, you can find a detailed explanation online uh, based on what double can be and what decimal can be and what floats can be there's like specific uh, numbers they can go out to right so we'll make double set to pi and give it pi's value or in this case uh, math dot pi we can use because I do want to show you some math stuff that you can do with C sharp right so math is basically a system class and pi is actually a uh, method within that class so pi is obviously set in this case to the value of pi uh, the value of pi in case those of you have, have who have not taken a rudimentary geometry course pi is 3.1415 and then there's several numbers after that if you want you can uh, try and memorize as far as you can <laughs> it goes pretty much infinitely uh, infinitely um, we can also do rudimentary math in C sharp for instance we'll do uh, we'll give it an integer value and we'll say rand and we'll take for instance age and we'll multiply it by 3 so basically that'll be 60 because age is set to 20 so 3 times 20 is 60 we can even do parentheses if you've taken algebra you'll know the uh, order of operations and we can multiply or actually in this case we'll divide by 2 and we can even parenthesize that and it just goes on and on and on you can use any basic math plus minus anything really and then we could even take all of that and multiply it by pi which we're not going to do in this example so how do we print this out if we can't use numbers well we'll turn the numbers into a string uh, let's make a message box and we'll just say 
my name is Chris. And as I told you before, I will do the next line. And we'll say, I am... Oh, for Chris, by the way, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to make that a variable. And we'll take name and put that in there. The way you put in variables like you've just seen me do is with uh, uh, addition symbols. You can just um, exit out of the string by uh, closing it with a uh, quotation. And then just put in an addition symbol. And then name, another addition symbol, and then more text. Or you could just leave the text off. Uh, that's perfectly fine, too. So now what we're going to do is put in an age. For instance, we'll do age years old. And let's go to the next line. And lastly, we'll just say um, random number is and then we'll add in that random number we created called rand. If we wanted to, we could also add in pi. In fact, let's do that. Let's just put in another n and say pi is pi. Now, you could also just do math.pi if you wanted to. You don't have to create a variable for it. That's, that's perfectly logical. You can uh, include this into your uh, expression. Because as long as these quotations have been added onto these uh, variables, these variables are no longer considered integers, and they can be used uh, as a parameter for this message box show. By the way, I'm using a lot of... Um, programming terms that some of you out there might uh, not know yet. Parameter is basically uh, your variable that you're passing through a function, uh, in, in this case the show function, or method in this case. And uh, a variable is anything containing data that you have set within the program. For instance, these are all variables. Um, this is a class. We'll get to classes in a later lesson, um, a very later later lesson. And that's, that's pretty much it right now. Uh, this is the most basic uh, you need to know, variables, outputs, um, and it all works flawlessly. Let's go ahead and debug it, and I'll show you how button 2 reacts. Once we click button 2, my name is Chris. We expected that to happen. I am 20 years old, because our age uh, variable was set to 20. Random number is 35, and that is, of course, due to the fact that we are taking... Uh, 20 multiply ma multiplying that by 3, making 60, dividing by 2, making 30, and then adding 5 on to make 35. Pi is, and we get nothing. Now you may be wondering why that is. That's because I left it off. I, I took it out on accident. Right, I, 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 I meant to put the pi variable back in there, so let's debug it again. And there you go, 3.14159265358979. That's as far as it'll go. It, it does not uh, continue showing you the rest of the numbers for pi, because if it did, it would literally take forever. Right. So, that is variables and output and roughly anything else that we wanted to cover in this uh, lesson. Be sure to continue on.